welcome to this video where we're going to be studying the goddess Venus but we're starting with this picture I wonder how many of you watching know who the statue is of maybe you'd like to take a guess we're going to work our way to the statue we do have another video on the channel which is going to be related to this one I don't know if you want to watch this video first or watch it afterwards I'll put this in the first comment below, the link, exploring Athena, the Virgin Mother Goddess, because we're going to speak about Athena in this video. Okay, let's go to the page on Venus. So the part we're going to focus on is that the day for Venus is Friday. So Friday, the day of Venus. And we also notice that we have Aeneas in this mythology as a child of Venus. So then the Trojans would claim to have a goddess in their you know in their ancestry, you know, descended from a goddess, which could be something to think about. But now this really starts to open up when we consider the equivalent, the Greek equivalent Aphrodite, and go to the page on Aphrodite, and then we'll see how this will open up for our exploring because we have more equivalents. So we've got the Roman Venus, the Canaanite Astarte, Mesopotamian Inanna, Egyptian Hathor or Isis. So now we're seeing these regions and are they connected with this worship? And I want to go to the page on Astarte to show you, you know, why we've got in the title the Queen of Heaven. Because we learn about this from the Bible, from the book of Jeremiah, about Ishtar or Ashtarte. I'd like to read this verse from the book of Jeremiah. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Okay, so the Israelites provoking God to anger worshipping other gods, baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven, and we notice how it's a family affair. I just wanted to read this verse from the Bible because, you know, a lot of our study recently has been on mythology, you know, looking into these different gods and goddesses of the mythology, and scholars and researchers out there can try, you know, use the mythology and these mysteries to make us have doubt with the Bible, you know, that we start to lose trust in the Bible. But I just want to show you that, you know, the Bible is telling us what we need to be careful about, you know, telling us that God is angry with the with the Israelites, you know, worshipping other gods, you know, baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven. You know, it's telling us what we need to, what we need to be careful of, what we should avoid, and yeah, just to show you that we must just be careful that we mustn't allow you know, others to make us doubt or that we can't trust the Bible. And then also what we can also learn from this is if we think about all the other regions that are caught up in this worship, you know, it wasn't just the, the surrounding nations like the Canaanites. What we're going to learn from this video is that you know, many regions of the world seem to be caught up in this in this worship okay so let's carry on so what I'd like to think about is we've got these different regions but we're not seeing the mention of the Celtic or the Vedic and we've been focusing on the Celtic obviously because of the the playlist but also thinking about the connection to the Vedic because we had this video you know from Britain to India so we're also thinking about these other regions like India, but we're not seeing that just yet with the with the with these equivalents with the goddesses. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this one aspect of Friday. So Friday for the day for for Venus. Where is this word coming from? And it could be coming from the Norse pantheon or the Norse religion. Now in the Norse, so coming towards Germania and Scandinavia, 
let me show you on the map so you know this part of the world this is the kind of region that we speaking about now for the worship we have the goddess Frigga or Freya and we see all these variations coming to free so free day Friday so freeze day and it could even have the meaning of free the way we know it in our language but what I would like to do is show you the origin of Frigg so the connection with another Norse goddess Freya if we go to the page on Freya we see the etymology lady, mistress or lord this is why I said about this video how it will help because that connects the Norse with the Greek with Athena because Athena we saw the the scholar making the connection to the lady and also to the to Lord for Athena so if you watch that video that'll make sense okay if we go back so the reason why I want to speak about Freya and Frigg could it be connected with our previous video we were looking at the Brigues and according to Herodotus in Europe they called themselves the Brigues but when in Asia they called themselves the Phrygians and I was yeah I'm still a bit confused with the Phrygians I don't know if you really um, just based on the previous video do we really understand the Phrygians but just thinking about these two words and then these two goddesses could this be a way to uh, link this together or to try to understand more if we think about the similarity we have Frigg or Frigga Freya but then we also have Freya so it's just a theory I'm just something I'm contemplating could that be connected to these words you know the Brigas and the Phrygians you know is it actually connected to you know a goddess and we'll see that it could be plausible because if we go further down to see what tribes or peoples could be carrying this in their name we see we have the Celtic Brigantes and if we go to the page on the Brigantes we're not going to be exploring the geography in this video don't want to upset the flow of the video which is focusing on the mythology with the with these different goddesses it says here that the Brigantes the tribe share the same proto-Celtic root as the goddess Brigantia so now we do have a goddess with Brig, with Brig in you know in her name so I'm just wondering now about you know the Brigas this tribe so the Brigas and the Phrygians you know, is it actually connected to to um, to a goddess and now we have um, Brigantia so a Celtic goddess so now we get in the Celtic and we see how it connects to the Greek because she was identified with the goddess Minerva and just for our learning our recap Minerva is the equivalent for Athena so we see the Greek now being connected with the Celtic before we go on further because there's lots of details to try follow in this video I just wanted to have a bit of a, a break from the exploring the connections and the equivalence how important is it to think about the the root for the for the worship or for the mythology you know where is it stemming from you know, how important is that going to be for our perspective we did see in the work of Sir Isaac Newton that the goddess Minerva may have been born in Libya near the river Triton so thinking North Africa so how important could that be because there's a lot of focus on Egypt but Libya and North Africa seems to be you know, largely ignored but it could be quite significant for this mythology you know, thinking about these connections with Minerva and Athena, how it could even you know connect to the to the Norse. You know, thinking about the Norse pantheon, you know, with Freya and Frigg, 
So it's a Norse religion or a Norse form of worship, but what's the origin? You know, potentially it could be coming back to, you know, to Libya. So I just thought that could be something interesting to, interesting to think about for the origin, and we'll see how this could be significant, you know, later in the video with um, Libya. Okay, let's get back to the the trail of following these different goddesses. So just to find something to be able to recap with, let's go to this one. So we've seen these different regions. We even now have got the connection with the Celtic. We've got um, a Celtic goddess, Brigantia, being connected to Minerva. So we're seeing all these connections, but we still haven't seen a connection to the Vedic world. Now, if we go further down, we actually see with this etymology, so the high one, so high to rise, but we see here the this name Burgund, we see Sanskrit, we see Bharati, and we've been speaking quite a lot about the the Bharats, and now we see Bharati. Okay, so Bharati, another name for a Hindu goddess, Sarasvati. And this is going to give us something else to think about, because thinking about the name Britain, we spoke about Brutus the Trojan with the legendary history, you know, with the, the first king of Britain, Brutus. So was Britain named after Brutus? This could give us something else to think about now, because you know, the Bharat of, the, you know, the Britons, and then thinking about Bharat in India, and now we're seeing this Bharati with the goddess. Okay, so if we go to the page on Sarasvati, we see how this connects to where we started, because in the Vedic or the Hindu, Sarasvati, her day is Friday. And that takes us all the way back to, you know, where we started with Venus and her day, you know, being Friday. So, you know, it does seem like the we've been saying on the channel and the viewers have also been saying how, you know, it all seems to be connected because, you know, the Vedic to the Roman and the Greek, but the actual word Friday, you know, is being influenced by the Norse. And, you know, that takes us to the Celtic with Brigantia and Brigantia takes us back to the Greek. So it all seems to be connected. And I want to try to finish by getting to the statue. You know, who is the statue? Now in this work of this work we were using, the Phoenician origin of the Britain, Scots and Anglo Saxons, we have this coin. So a Phoenician coin of Carthage inscribed Barat. So we keep seeing that word Barat. Now, I think this could be the interpretation of the scholar, but it says this head is of Barati or Britannia. Now, I think this Barati is where we've come from. So Barati or Sarasvati, so the Vedic. So the Vedic, now we see the connection to Carthage, but we see Britannia. So if you guessed that, that this statue is Britannia, and well done for getting that right. So Britannia is the national personification of Britain as a helmeted female warrior holding a trident and shield. And then we get that famous saying, rule Britannia. So this is going to be very interesting to, to think about and to see how this connects together because Britain being influenced by Britannia so like I was saying, we've got something else to consider with the naming of Britain. You know, Brutus, the Trojan, but what about, you know, the goddess? You know, Brigantia or Britannia. And this is going to connect with all this work that we've been doing because Britannia was soon personified as a goddess looking fairly similar to the goddess Athena Minerva. Both are seated and replete with helmet spear or trident and shield so we've got to try I think now about that 
concept of you know the origin so Britannia so you, you can say like the, pa the, the the patron of Britain you know so Britain's going forth and this is the you know used as as a statue or an emblem you know to go forth and we and Britain's conquering with uh, with Britannia but with the scholar is connecting it to to the Phoenician coin of Carthage so if we go to the map of Carthage so Carthage was in Tunisia and this is showing the, the Carthaginian Empire so it's a maritime empire so that's something I think which could be important there's a nice picture here somewhere to show this for Carthage if we just think about the way you know the city is created this is a you know a digital recreation how you know the maritime aspect is you know built into the the city itself so you know a maritime empire and now this is going to be a theory that we're working on so this video will kind of explain the theory of how Athena could be connected to Carthage and now it could make more sense with this video if you, you know, if you do watch that you'll see how it makes more sense with this video how Athena being connected with Carthage so the patron of this region and it being a maritime empire but now with all those different connections through the with the goddesses we see it could connect to Britannia and Britannia is depicted in the same way as Athena and we know that Britain was a very famous maritime empire and still holds a lot of importance you know in the world so I think that's going to be it for this video I think there's a lot to take from this video you know things that we haven't maybe explored further or elaborated on but you know a lot of content a lot to think about and we are still thinking about the you know the Trojans and the fact that you know Aeneas the Trojan prince according to mythology you know being descended from a goddess and then we're also still thinking about the the Briges and the Phrygians so a bit mysterious and still trying to understand the Phrygians but maybe this connection with the goddesses you know Freya and Freya might help so we'll speak more about that and we're going to try think about the different tribes or peoples that could have this this element of Brigas in their name like the like the Brigantes and explore the, ge the geography more so that'll be the next video thank you for watching this video and hopefully we'll see you in another one